hello students uh, today we are going to discuss treatment of uh, inflammatory bowel disease so let's uh, first see what is inflammatory bowel disease inflammatory bowel disease is characterized by chronic relapsing inflammation of gastrointestinal tract that is there is inflammation of the wall of git now as we all know wall of git is made up of uh, four main tissue layers innermost is a mucosa then submucosa muscle layer and the outermost is a serosa now talking about the clinical course of disease uh, the disease that is the inflammatory bowel disease shows relapses that is flare up of disease and increase in symptoms followed by remission that is improvement in symptoms now inflammatory bowel disease includes two diseases namely ulcerative colitis and the crohn's disease now cause of inflammatory bowel disease is unknown but dysfunctional host gastrointestinal immune response plays an important role now it's important to understand that uh, there is abnormal interaction between gut microflora and the immune system of body and this abnormal interaction causes excessive generation of pro inflammatory cytokines and these pro inflammatory cytokines cause inflammation of git wall and this inflammation perpetuates and thus continue indefinitely and it is responsible for the chronic inflammation now uh, in ulcerative colitis inflammation is restricted to colon and rectum whereas in the crohn's disease inflammation can occur in any part of uh, git wall from mouth to anus terminal ileum and colon are the most involved sites and majority of patients suffer from ileocecal inflammation that is inflammation of the wall of ileum and inflammation of the uh, wall of the cecum cecum is the first part of colon now uh, since inflammatory bowel disease is a disease of chronic inflammation of gut wall it is treated predominantly with the drugs that are anti inflammatory and or immunosuppressants now there are common drugs for the treatment of ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease that is drugs used in ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease are the same now drugs used in the treatment of uh, inflammatory bowel disease are uh, are uh, classified as amino salicylates that is a 5 amino salicylic acid derivatives for example sulfa salazine mesalazine balsalazide corticosteroids like prednisone hydrocortisone budesonide immunomodulator agents like azathioprine sigma captopurine immunosuppressive agents like uh, methotrexate cyclosporine antibiotics like uh, metronidazole and uh, biological agents like uh, infliximab adalimumab sertolizumab natalizumab uh, now let's uh, talk about the first category of drugs used for the treatment of uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease that is the uh, amino salicylates that is uh, the derivatives of 5 amino salicylic acid now this is a structure of uh, sulfa salazine it consists of 5 uh, amino salicylic acid and sulfa pyridine linked together by the azo bond now the sulfa pyridine is not absorbed in small intestine its function is mainly to transport sulfa salazine to the colon and in the colon or in the large intestine colonic bacteria break this azo bond and uh, therefore uh, they cause release of 5 uh, amino salicylic acid and sulfa pyridine in the colon now this 5 amino salicylic acid exhibits local anti inflammatory effect in the colon that is it inhibits inflammation in the colon while the sulfa pyridine is absorbed in colon and because of its absorption it exhibits side effects now talking about the usage of sulfa salazine sulfa salazine is useful in mild to moderate inflammatory bowel disease now sulfa salazine exerts as we have already discussed sulfa salazine exerts anti inflammatory effect in the colon and since uh, ulcerative colitis is restricted to rectum and colon the sulfa salazine provides symptomatic relief in ulcerative colitis whereas in crohn's disease inflammation can occur anywhere throughout the gastrointestinal tract uh, that is in the wall of gastrointestinal tract therefore sulfa salazine is useful in crohn's disease to a lesser extent however it is useful in uh, colon uh, restricted crohn's disease 
Now talking about the dose of sulfasalazine, a dose of 3 to 4 grams per day resolves symptoms over a, a few weeks. But relapses are common after stopping the usage. That means flare up of symptoms or increase in symptoms or relapses are common after stopping the use of sulfasalazine. Now sulfasalazine is also uh, used as a maintenance therapy. Now 1.5 to 2 gram of sulfasalazine per day postpones relapses in most cases. Now talking about the mechanism of action of uh, sulfasalazine. Now as discussed earlier, 5 amino salicylic acid exerts anti-inflammatory effect. Now it, it inhibits the enzyme cyclooxygenase as well as lipooxygenase. Now inhibition of uh, prostaglandins uh, leukotrienes and inhibition of other mediators uh, cytokines like uh, uh, platelet activating factor, tumor necrotic factor, uh, nuclear transcription factor. Inhibition of all these cytokines is responsible for its anti-inflammatory effect. Now as discussed earlier, sulfapyridine is mainly responsible for transporting 5-amino salicylic acid to the colon and small amounts of sulfapyridine is absorbed in the colon which is responsible for its toxicity. Now in around 20-30% to 30 of patients treated with sulfasalazine, treatment is discontinued due to its adverse effects. Now metabolites of sulfasalazine form crystals and these crystals are passed in the urine. Thus one of the side effects of uh, sulfasalazine is the crystal urea that is crystals in urine and this crystal urea can cause kidney damage. Now sulfasalazine interferes with folate absorption and this folic acid supplementation should be given along with this drug. Now other side effects are rashes, fever, joint pain, hemolysis, then uh, blood discrasis, nausea, vomiting, headache, malaise and anemia. In some patients, adverse effects like uh, oligozoospermia and male infertility are also reported. Uh, now, the next category of drugs are the corticosteroids. Now, corticosteroids like uh, prednisone, hydrocortisone, budisonide. Now, very important to know that uh, these corticosteroids are very potent anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive agents. And these corticosteroids are the drug of choice for the treatment of moderate to severe inflammatory bowel disease. Now, symptomatic relief is usually seen within 3 to 7 days of oral prednisolone therapy and remission or improvement in symptoms are observed in about 2 to 3 weeks. Now, apart from this, intravenous methyl prednisolone therapy is effective for the rapid relief. Now, long-term use of uh, corticosteroids is associated with the risk of uh, immunosuppression, accelerated bo bone loss and fractures, hypertension, glucose intolerance and uh, various other problems. And thus, corticosteroids are generally used for short periods. And they are discontinued after improvement in symptoms or remission is achieved. Now, our uh, next category of drugs are the immunomodulators, for example, azathioprine and uh, 6 mercaptopurine. Now, it has been found that uh, quite a few patients of uh, severe inflammatory bowel disease treated with corticosteroids relapse on stopping the corticosteroid therapy. And uh, some patients uh, show steroid resistant, resistance, uh, that means they do not respond to the steroids. So uh, immunomodulators like uh, azathioprine are frequently prescribed in these patients. Now apart from this, administration of drugs like uh, azathioprine also prevents long term use of steroid therapy which is associated with a large number of risk factors. Uh, thus, these uh, drugs, uh, they are very useful in severe inflammatory bowel disease. They are used as steroid sparing drugs. That means uh, uh, they are used to prevent long term use of uh, corticosteroid therapy. Now, these drugs are indicated in steroid resistant. That is those patients who do not respond to steroids. In steroid dependent, that means those patients who are dependent on steroids. But since uh, steroids cannot be used uh, for long term, so over a period of time, uh, steroids are replaced by immunomodulators. So these drugs are indicated in steroid resistant, uh, then steroid dependent, 
and those patients that experience frequent flare ups or uh, frequent relapses now very important to know that uh, both these drugs uh, that is azathioprine and 6 mercaptopurine they exhibit slow onset of action that means action is seen after their use for a period of 3 to 6 months and therefore initially these drugs are used in combination with uh, corticosteroids and biological agents now a uh, next category of drugs are the immunosuppressive drugs for example methotrexate and cyclosporine now these are the second line drugs for the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease now let's first talk about the methotrexate it is an uh, immunosuppressant and it is specifically useful in crohn's disease now methotrexate exhibits remission inducing property that means it reduces severity of the disease and it has a faster onset than azathioprine and there, therefore it can be used in the place of uh, azathioprine now absorption and efficacy of uh, methotrexate are poor after oral administration uh, in inflammatory bowel disease and therefore weekly parenteral therapy is required now since administration of uh, methotrexate intravenously produces higher side effects it is uh, used in patients not responding to or not tolerating azathioprine now another uh, immunosuppressant is a cyclosporine it is a second line drug it is used occasionally in ulcerative colitis it is used in patient not responding to steroids now very important to understand that cyclosporine has a rapid onset of action it produces its action within 1 to 2 weeks and it is used uh, along with the immunomodulators like uh, azathioprine until the slow acting immunomodulators that is azathioprine which produces its action within 3 to 6 months begin to work in patients undergoing surgery so cyclosporine is used initially along with azathioprine for the initial 3 to 6 months and once azathioprine uh, produces its therapeutic effect cyclosporine is stopped uh now a uh, next category of drugs are the antibiotics for example metronidazole and ciproproxacine now these drugs are used either alone or in combination uh, to treat comp- uh, complications of uh, crohn's disease like cryptabscesses and intestinal fistulas now next category of drugs are the biological agents for example infliximab adalimumab uh, then sertolizumab uh, natalizumab now these drugs are very toxic these drugs are administered intravenously and these biological agents are highly toxic and therefore these are reserved for severe and refractory inflammatory bowel disease or not responding to intravenous corticosteroids and immunosuppressants now one of the biological agents which is commonly used is infliximab now infliximab is a chimeric tumor necrotic uh, factor alpha antibody now this tumor necrotic factor as you all know is a pro inflammatory cytokine responsible for inflammation now this tumor necrotic factor activates macrophages it recruits neutrophils it increases intestinal permeability and overall uh, the tissue necrotic factor alpha is responsible for chronic inflammation and infliximab is a chimeric tumor necrotic factor alpha antibody it is infused intravenously every 2 to 8 hours and the therapy with infliximab is continued till response is obtained and remission is maintained now cessation or stoppage of infliximab is associated with high rates of disease flare up that is disease relapse that is increase in the symptoms of disease the toxicity is very high it can cause rare reactions it can cause formation of antibodies it is also associated with reduced resistance to infections and therefore uh, its use is reserved for severe and refractory inflammatory bowel disease so this is in brief on the management of uh, inflammatory bowel disease now please note that the information provided in this video is meant exclusively for the students from their examination point of view and we kindly consult a physician for the treatment of uh, inflammatory bowel disease now if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video